Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on Sign Lens, we're going to take a look at the new Sony ZV-1, a great entry-level vlogging camera. And you know what else is a great entry-level vlogging camera? This! The iPhone! Let's take a look at these two, compare them with one another, and see which one's the best entry-level vlogging camera for you! So here's how we're going to do the test. We're going to shoot everything for this lesson on the ZV-1 and on the iPhone. So we're going to be switching back and forth, sound and picture, all the time. So we got both of them running right now. We'll switch to the camera, and then we'll switch back to the iPhone. Go back and forth between the ZV-1 and the phone, and just be able to give you an idea of exactly how they compare with each other. These are beginning level, entry level, vlogging kind of setups. It's got great 4K recording capabilities at 60 frames per second and 120 at 1080p. So it's made to be able to give you 4K output, and a lot of people are using that on YouTube and places like that where you post. So. And it has a really cool microphone that's designed to capture someone that's speaking directly to the lens. I found with the iPhone, the microphone's okay, but it's really hard to get that sound of things directly in front of you. Most everyone will put a, a some kind of a, a mic, a Rode mic, on their phone to be able to get better audio. One last thing I want to mention is the ND filter. The Sony does have that's a built-in. That's a great in, setup. Has a built-in three-stop ND filter, which really helps you, especially if you're doing video, help you get more shallow depth of field when you're shooting in bright light. So that's really exciting because an ND filter on an electronic camera like this is really, I think, where we're going. I think we'll see the next generation of all Sony cameras will start having built-in NDEs. I think. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. It would be very cool. It's, it's really needed, but it does give you the ability to give you shallow depth of field, even though we are shooting on a um, on a small camera, which is one inch sensor it means there's tons, tons of depth, of, depth of, of field, and to be able to get rid of some of that with an ND in a bright sun situation really is helpful. First, we'll, sh we'll look at the iPhone close up. The iPhone can't use portrait mode Not in, in video, video mode. <laughs> so this is what it is, you know? Boy, the floating is pretty nice. Yeah, stabilization, stabilization is pretty good. Stabilization yeah. is very nice on that iPhone. Yeah. Now compare that to the ZV-1. Now this is without ND. Now we're shooting at a 50th of a second shutter because we want, you know, this somewhat cinematic look. Stabilization looks pretty good in this. It does. The depth of field is still pretty deep because I think we're shooting at like an eight or something like Don't that. Don't you see this little, this is almost like a, a, like a screen, like. Yeah, that's the stabilization yeah. trying to compensate. But the cool thing is this, the ZV-1 does have that ND that we've talked about. That internal ND is incredible because now, and this is a great situation to see it in, you can give yourself a much shallower depth of field with that internal ND. Granted, we are shooting at 70 millimeters, so we're at the long end. That's what it takes to get this out of focus background, but it's something. Yeah. You know, this is the only tool you got. So that, I mean, that does work. So the, there's really an advantage there, those internal NDs. I would like to think, and I hope to see, Sony put these internal NDs into their camera line eventually. Yeah, that would be really cool. So on the iPhone, at the ultra wide end, it's something like a 16 millimeter lens, maybe even a little wider, 14 millimeter, something like that. Uh, and these, that's on the new Pro, iPhone 11 Pro iPhone version. iPhone 11 Pro, yeah. yeah. Then we reach the common ground here. So the iPhone at their regular lens, the, the good old iPhone lens is about a 24 millimeter ish. And that's pretty much, that, that is what the ZV-1 has at the wide end. Um, yeah, very similar field of view. Yeah, very Th much so. This is the widest for the Sony. So if you're shooting ultra wide stuff, if you want that fisheye look, then you know obviously the iPhone is the way to go. But the, wide, the regular wide end for both is about the same. Now the ZV-1 can do in between. The ZV-1 can do like a 35 millimeter, which the iPhone can't. Yeah, iPhone's got set focal lengths, whereas the, yeah. the ZV-1 can change those. So here's the 50 millimeter end. Now this is the tightest that the iPhone can get. This is the telephoto, and that's about 50 mil. And again, you know, if we blow this up, ZV-1 looks pretty okay. It does, it looks you know? very nice. It looks very nice, a lot of detail. If we blow this up on your face on the iPhone, not no. Not so much. No, not at all. It's Again, it looks very so artificial, and that, a lot of that's the HDR. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, it just looks like a great I image on the right. You've got the nice gradations. It's just a much more subtle rendition of skin and color and things that yeah. are going on there. Yeah. But we're looking at those HDRs, and that's, that's really kind of a mistake, I think. And then, of course, we have the 70 millimeter end, and we've already seen that with the other portrait image. Which the uh, Which the iPhone can't. Have. Yeah, it doesn't go that long. Not a huge jump, but yeah, the Sony does have more range unless you're shooting ultra wide shots in which case you know the iPhone the is iPhone's your, a better, better bet. Another thing we want to test is portrait mode. So the iPhone has a pretty good computational algorithm that allows you to shoot portraits with shallow depth of field, artificial shallow depth of field. We want to take the same portrait on the Sony camera using an actual telephoto lens 
that actually opens up to 2.8 and see how they compare. Okay, so here we have a portrait that we've taken. We're in portrait mode on the iPhone, and then we've zoomed all the way into 70 millimeters on the ZV-1, we're shooting wide open, and the iPhone is shallower. It's much shallower depth of field. Yeah. It falls off. But Obviously it's also it's artificial. artificial. Yeah. But does it make a difference? I, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, no, it really doesn't. You know, the reality is. Unless the mask is bad or something around your, yeah, right. your head, but it doesn't appear to be at all. It's really good. The Sony, you know, I, I think the Sony has a little more subtle tonality. It's more yeah. of a real camera. Um, and, you know, we could make a lot of adjustments in terms of color and stuff to the Sony. I feel like the iPhone is pretty, the contrast is, it's really high contrast and all the limitations that come along with the iPhone are on display. Mm -hmm. But I will say just looking at it out of the box, the iPhone does take a pretty good portrait. They're pretty comparable. Well, the depth of field and everything looks, looks very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, but I do agree with you that the ZV-1 feels more like an image from a camera. Yeah. And not so much like a, the artificial iPhone image, but. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's probably an unfair thing to even say these days, but that's the sense <laughs> of it. The color on the iPhone is atrocious. It's, it's pretty rough. So orange. Pretty rough. The, I mean, this Sony right out of the box doesn't look amazing, but you could make it look nice yeah, pretty easily. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. At least the color's more neutral and gives you a a better color rendition of the scene. Yeah. You know. Audio is a big thing. Uh, the ZV-1 is supposed to have a great audio that is is focused more like a shotgun mic on you in front of the camera, whereas the iPhone's a little more omnidirectional. Most people are use your iPhone very often. They'll put a little Rode mic on there to be able to get it more directional. Mm -hmm. So let's just see how it compares. So here's really the like iPhone. How articulable this screen is. Which the phone doesn't have at all. On the phone, you've <laughs> either got to put it around and use the back-facing camera, which, which is, is not, not as good. good. Or you gotta walk, walk blind like we are right now. We have yeah, no, we have idea. no idea. It may be it's sure not even recording. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I like the. Yeah, articulation. Actually, sounds better than I expected. It's not Doesn't bad. sound terrible. Yeah. We're very close to it. We are very close to it, and that's why I found if you're far away at all from your mm -hmm. subject with the iPhone, it's really hard to hear what they're saying. And then here's the ZV1. We really like how articulable this screen is. Which the phone doesn't have at all. On the phone, you've <laughs> either gotta put it around, use the back-facing camera, which, which is, is not, not as good. good. Or you gotta walk, walk blind like we are right now. We have yeah, no, we have idea. no idea. It may be in well, sure recording. Great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I like the articulable screen on the Sony. Super helpful to know just what you're getting. There are a couple other things though too. It has a real zoom lens as a equivalent. This has this a kind of a. It, it's like there's no high end. It's, yeah. it's been suppressed. Yeah, everything's yeah. put into a little can. Yeah, <laughs> so it has this kind of down in here kind of. Really this bad. feels further you know, away. It feels know, distant to me. The, I will say, it's hard. We are very close to the camera, which is what it's intended for, right? Is, this is for this bloggers. For vlogging, so yeah. This is the ideal situation. They sound similar. I think the iPhone is at a lower, does have a lower range. The, the Sony has seemed to kind of gotten rid of a lot of the low end, so it doesn't have as much bass, mm -hmm. whereas there's more bass to the iPhone, and you can hear that a little bit in the wind coming through. The last thing we want to talk about is image stabilization. The image stabilization on the iPhone is legendary. I mean, it is like almost steady cam status. The Sony does have five axis stabilization. I'm really curious to see. We're if seeing it, it right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely right a little now. bit shaky here. The iPhone, I've always been amazed by the iPhone stabilization. I mean, there's shots that I get running around with my kids and stuff, and I think, man, like this is almost steady cam status. The shutter seems see like it's jittery to me. Yeah, I mean, that's like, the downside with the iPhone. You have to shoot a fast shutter. Yeah. But the stabilization is incredible. It really is. You're walking <laughs> with that phone. And I'm and holding it on, hand, a on my hand. Yeah. Stick, yeah. <laughs> There's no way it was that smooth. Yeah, so it's pretty awesome. Now let's compare that to the Sony ZV-1. Yeah, with the ZV-1, you see the jitteriness a lot well, look more. At, you see your step in your head. Every time uh -huh. you step, your head bobs, mm -hmm. bob, bob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the image is constantly kind of shifting around. Yeah, it's jumping around. Boy, the phone is much better than this mode than the. Then yeah, for stabilization, definitely. So, what? It, who's this camera for? You know, it's it's interesting because right now with the protests going on, a lot of people are going down. You know, they're they're documenting it. They're making little videos and stuff. And I feel like in that circumstance, a tool like the ZV-1 is really helpful because you do have that zoom. You can. You can be far away, or you can you can get a real 24 to 70 sort of range out of the lens. Uh, it produces nice images. That built-in ND is really great That's for, super for video, especially. Yeah, so I, uh, you know, 
if I was a young vlogger and I just started out and I wanted something just to haul around with me, I think it'd be a great option. Yeah, yeah, for 700 bucks. I mean, especially if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of money, you don't want to be buying you know, an A7 III or a, or a T yeah. T7 or get into the, all whatever, the things you know. that complicate the, things. Yeah, it's a really small, lightweight solution. And that flip out screen and a lot of the features really do make it a kind of a plug and play option. You don't have to fiddle around with much. Yeah, but it's a great little offering from Sony. I love the fact that they're thinking like this. Yeah. You know, wanting to come up with something that solves that uh, kind of um, hole in the market for people who are just beginning vloggers. And I'd, I would check it out. So there you have it. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think of this uh, review. And we'd love to hear from you. Subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We need your support. And keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.